questions about whether or not the phones are just too big or too influenced by Samsung. This is Ask the Buffalo. Let's go ahead and get started. So our first question comes from at Phone Tech, who asks at John Ford Lakers, how long is the battery life in the iPhone 6, 6 Plus? Uh, well, good question. First, I would never gauge phone usage based on battery life for the first week because usually you're using it way heavier. So having said that, Saturday I was using my iPhone 6 Plus pretty hard. I had the screen on. I usually I don't set it for auto brightness. I had it set to about 75%. I was testing absolutely everything. I had to plug my phone in twice. Uh, after about 10 hours, I was down to about 20-25%. But Sunday was my son's birthday and I couldn't be on the phone all the time. I took it off the charger around 8. The time I plugged it back in at night uh, around 11, I still had 46% battery life left. So the real battery usage is probably somewhere in between. Uh, but it looks to be certainly better uh, than what we saw on the iPhone 5S. But nothing that's going to totally blow you away. I'm still doing tests though on the iPhone 6. So stay tuned to a full review on both of those to see if how much better or better at all uh, they might be. Next question comes from Ed Zemanyais who asked, at John for Lakers, what is the future of BlackBerry after able to run Android apps? So listen, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to go on the record of saying this. BlackBerry 10.3 is really, really good. Uh, it comes with Amazon's App Store built in. You can sideload pretty much every Android app. You've got BlackBerry's own App Store on there. It is a really solid operating system. The knock used to be, and I was one of the knocking it, was that it just didn't have apps at all. Uh, but it got super good between 10 and 10.3. The keyboards got way better. Uh, BlackBerry's awesome mail service got more intuitive. Uh, if you haven't considered going to BlackBerry, you might want to try it. You get kind of the best of Android, I think, with their app stores. Uh, but also you get sort of the best of BlackBerry now, too, with their incredible email. Uh, the passport's coming. The keyboard on that looks absolutely awesome. Uh, give them another shot. Uh, at least go ahead and check them out at a store and see if something that you think you might want to use, because uh, they are really up and coming. Uh, and I think the BlackBerry still has some life left. Let me take a quick sec to thank our friends at Ting. If you've got a cell phone, you've got a cell phone plan, chances are you're overpaying for stuff that you just don't need. With Ting, there are no plans. You aren't forced to pick one based on what you think you might use that month, which means there are way, way less waste, which means less money coming out of your pocket. You simply pay for the service you use, leave the service whenever you want, and there are no fees at all. There are no hidden admin fees, no sketchy charges, and Ting bills are super simple to understand. They only charge you for the usage plus $6 per device plus tax each month to make it really simple. If you're ready to get started, use promo code technobuffalo.ting.com and save $25 on your device purchase or get $25 in Ting service credit to use towards your monthly bill. Again, that's technobuffalo.ting.com. Next question comes from at Red Sox 2009 who asks, at John for Lakers hashtag ask the Buffalo, does a larger iPhone level the playing fields with Android or is Apple still behind at all? This way it usually goes with Android and Apple. Uh, almost always Android is the one that put out new features first and then sort of refine it live. Um, Apple takes the other approach, usually wait, sometimes way longer than I would like, and I'm sure you as well to get the new features out on phones. Take NFC, for example. Android's had NFC for the better part of three and a half years. Apple just put it out for Apple Pay on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, but it's totally neutered. You can't do anything else with it other than use it for mobile payments. Um, when it comes to the screen, certainly I don't think we'd have an iPhone 6 Plus if it wasn't for Samsung. Um, screens are now going 2K, uh, and Apple's just finally releasing a 1080p screen. Now it's a great 1080p screen, by all accounts, it's one of the best 1080p screens on there, uh, but resolution's getting better. Apple hasn't really played that much into the spec race, but if you're going to look at a spec sheet side by side with the latest from Apple and the latest from, from Android, certainly the Android device uh, has the iPhones beat on specs, uh, where sort of it gets sort of up to par as with the experience. Uh, if you like an experience that's going to work and be elegant uh, and have a great app store, then iOS is a great way to go, especially if you're in Apple's ecosystem. If you want customization and you want cutting edge features, Android's a great way to go. And what I said for consumers, it's good when you have choice, so you can really pick which side of the fence you are on. Last question comes from at Gary the Gamer 88 who asks, does reachability actually make the iPhone 6 Plus a one-handed phone? So I will say this, and I think a lot of people are in this boat. They didn't try the iPhone 6 Plus before they ordered it or bought it, and they got it home and they were like, this thing is just way too big. Uh, even our own Brendan Russell swapped his for an iPhone 6. My brother-in-law swapped his for an iPhone 6. It's big. So reachability, essentially what that lets you do is you double tap on Touch ID, and it drops the phone down just a little bit so you can reach things. I have pretty large hands. I can, I can palm basketball with relative ease. Uh, and it's a big phone even for me uh, to reach on. So I imagine for a lot of people, it's going to be really difficult. It's definitely a two-handed device. Reachability helps if you want to serve access to maybe uh, right three rows or columns of apps. Uh, but anything all the way on the left, you're still going to have to use two hands for. Uh, so be very aware of that. If you haven't tried or seen the 6 Plus yet in person, before you order, before you buy, go to an Apple store and give it a shot. Because uh, you might find it's just too big. And especially for iOS users who've been using iPhones forever, 
It's a really jarring jump from four inches to 5.5 inches, inch and a half on a phone is a lot. Uh, and the bezels are huge on top and bottom, so it's even larger than just the screen size. So definitely go and give it a shot. Hopefully that helped answer your question. Thank you guys for watching the episode of Ask the Buffalo. Once again, all the video that you see here uh, is being shot with iPhone 6 Plus as the audio is going directly into an iPhone 6 uh, on my lap. We got Ron filming, we got Mark doing B-roll, all with their respective phones, so it's kind of fun. Uh, we'll do other videos using the device so you can see what video looks like on it. Uh, until next time, I'm John Ranger from Techno Buffalo. See you guys next video. Bye-bye. Go to technobuffalo.ting.com to see how much you'll save. Ting, mobile that makes sense. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. We love making tech videos here, and if you like watching them, be sure to hit the giant subscribe button so you know exactly what's happening in the world of technology. And if you like gaming and you want to see us play some games, albeit sometimes kind of badly, check out our new Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash technobuffalo.